Hello everybody, welcome back, it's Kendra here. Today I'm going to be picking up where I left off in my last video. I'm putting together these kits that have a ball of yarn, a project bag, and a stitch marker. And right now I'm focusing on getting some stitch markers made um, to include in all of these kits. I had two kits ready at the end of my last video, so I'm going to show you finishing up some others, and then I will show you my longest stripe repeat ever, a little experiment that I had and finished up, and I'll show you that whole process. But first things first, getting these stitch markers made. Alrighty, here are the stitch markers. I am going to wait to put them in their little envelope until I start packing the orders uh, just to make sure the right one goes in. Otherwise, I am sure I'm going to be double checking it. But all they need to do is be slipped into a little brown envelope and with a little sticker on it. That's the last step for these. Because these are pretty small and dainty, I went for a small lobster hook here, which makes it really great for thinner fabrics. Thinking if it's being used with that sock, um, it's nice to have a smaller hook. A lot of my stitch markers have a larger hook, which can be good for other things as well, but just be aware it is a fairly small one on these here. It's early, but we're gonna get started, seeing if we can get this next color all dyed up. I sectioned it, and it's hard to see here, but I did label each section, so I'm hoping that makes it easier to see what everything needs to be, and I'm modeling it after this one here. Colors are gonna be awful because the lighting is terrible, but I'm going to get started and see if I can get one more color dyed. Today I am dying first thing in the morning, just like I often do. It's kind of a time when the kitchen is quiet and I can really focus in and try to get some colors laid down. Now this time I am dying off of uh, the recipe that I wrote down. And so it does change the way I work a little bit because I do want it to fit with that initial uh, yarn that I dyed. Um, so I'm measuring and you can see I don't have a respirator on, but I tried to very quickly measure the amount I need. Um, but yeah, that is recommended. Don't want to be spreading misinformation there, but I'm starting with this pink and soon I'm going to be laying in some purple on top. Um, and it's really just meant to be really marled and uh, a mix of those colors. Um, and just by slowly layering it on, that's the way I like to lay these tonal multicolors. So one color at a time, one stripe at a time. That's how this dyeing process works. Um, I actually feel like I'm so out of practice of dyeing non-self-striping. I know a few videos ago when I was first getting back in, I dyed some non-self-striping. I was like, maybe I'll just do this now. But you know, once I got into it, I remembered it's so fun to be able to come up with different combinations and see how all those colors work together. And I feel like every time I dye another color, I'm getting my process down even better. Um, and that just helps it all go really smoothly as well. I just love these greens and blues. That, those colors are definitely the ones I tend to gravitate to the most. Um, I definitely stay away from the reds and oranges a little bit more, um, but I like to dye a mix, but that's definitely blue. The blue family is my favorite of all the colors, so I know I favor it more than anything else. Really just popping in some clips of each stripe as it comes up. And um, yeah, now I have the time, I'm going to move on and do the purple one as well. I had all these wound up and just sitting and that makes it really easy once everything's all measured out already um, to be able to pick it up and get the dye going. I didn't end up changing the purple. I had thought about making it a little more vibrant, but I feel like it's nice to have a more muted option as well. And I really like how the purple turned out. I just wasn't sure how it fit with the bag, but I, I love the bag and I love the yarn. So I kept them both the way that they were. And I think this one, even more than the others, um, was the most easy to, um, to work from the recipe and make it look exactly the same as the um, a sample here. Now I listed the kits right after my last video and this is the first order that I was packing here. So I started off by writing just a little thank you note on my envelope and I included um, the stitch marker there and you can kind of see me pack this kit and put it all together. Later on you'll see I'm compiling the kit so they're easier um, 
to send out and just I have all the pieces all together but for here I'm just working one at a time and I still do this part write a little message in the washi tape and stuff on each one but not so much in uh, the assembly process so that is what I'm working on here on the first kit now sometimes I cut these little moments out but uh, yeah basically I have a lot of these sorts of little people popping in and talking to other people while working on this, you'll notice I tend to favor the uh, voiceover for that exact reason. I know I've said that in the past, but it remains to be true. Um, I'm really glad I get to work on things just throughout life. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned it on here that I do, I'm working a regular job too, a few days a week. So I do have childcare for that. Um, but Outside of those childcare times, I still have, um, you know, a lot of things I'm trying to work on here and there, mostly in the morning or at night, but some of these tasks happen during the day as well. Usually if the lighting's better, you can tell we're looking at the daytime here. So I know it's pretty early because I've just been finishing up these kits and getting them listed. I thought I'd give a little review on what I thought putting them together. Now I've sold yarn before, I've sold stitch markers to before, I haven't sold project bags before and so that was kind of a new foray for me. And for me, I initially was enjoying the process. <laughs> I liked sewing them and everything, but I feel like my interest in keeping up with all the sewing and project bags kind of went down over time. So just for reference, I made five of each kit, of four, five of four kits. So 20 bags, 20 balls of yarn, etc. Now I did end up with a few less bags of the purple because it was a bit of a different type of fabric that I ordered. And I knew when I ordered it, it wasn't really clear what the size was. <laughs> um, it was just sold in a different shape, basically. And I still got like a continuous piece of fabric, but I wasn't able to make as many bags. So there's a few less of those. Um... But yeah, it was just like a lot of buttonholes and a lot of drawstrings. And I definitely found that there were some of parts of that process I enjoyed a lot less. Whereas with the yarn, uh, even the parts I don't like, I like more than that. <laughs> so I think that was good confirmation to me that I'm doing the right thing by keeping on with the yarn. Sewing can be fun, but it definitely is not going to turn into like a main thing or anything. Also, I think the kits just feel like they took a lot of time. And um, when I could have been still dying. Um, but either way, I'm happy to get back into the dying. I'm really excited to try some different lengths of stripe repeats and just kind of really mix up how I was doing it. For a long time, I really stuck with four color stripe repeats four colors, and they were like chunky stripes, so usually around five rounds each color. Um, and I just stuck with that for a long time. I liked how it looked and I made, you know, I knit a bunch myself, but also sold quite a few. But with this new warping mill, I am so excited to try some new things. And again, the second half of this video is really going to focus on some of those things that I have been trying or the first experiment at least. Um, but just to finish up these kits, a little clip of the sewing here. Also the sewing, my sewing machine set up in my basement. That's pretty dark and dingy. So maybe that contributes to it too. Um, it just doesn't feel as part of life as some of these other things. So that might've been, you know, my own fault in making it so, um, but it was, it was a good learning opportunity. And I did like, I loved picking out the fabrics. That was probably my favorite part. <laughs> I loved all these like batik fabrics. There were some really cool like watercolor ones and I have lots of ideas of different pairings and things, but I don't know that I want to take on any more sewing for Etsy anytime soon. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, just all these little pieces of the puzzle to make the things come together um, to make it happen and here you can see I am doing the fabric drawstrings now back when I was planning I can't remember if I left it in the vlog or not but I had purchased some cotton rope but I ended up getting it a little bit too thick to work for these bags so instead of using it and I also got these metal tips that looked really cool that hooked on the end and I liked it but they just didn't work with this style of bag. So I do have that that I might use in the future. And instead I just went with the fabric drawstrings. 
it just kind of took a long time to, you know, sew them, turn them right way out. And then also with the threading on the drawstrings and everything else. Um, plus, they're not like the smoothest to open and shut. I don't know if you can see in that last clip. They're fine and I don't think it's like difficult, but it's not like, it's not a smooth pull, I guess. And so that's something I would be looking for um, in future bags if I ever revisit. Um, both to find a way to use the really thick cotton that I have, but also just a thinner cotton maybe would um, pull more easily. I just didn't really like the look of the plain rope ones and the ends were fraying and it just wasn't really a great option either. But I know I'll find a better solution in the future. And the initial prototype that I had had a fabric drawstring and I've been using it for a long time and I've been happy with it. Um, I don't mind it at all. In fact, the fact that when you pull it and it stays shut, it has been really good because I have a tendency to lose little balls of yarn or needles out of other bags in, because I always throw them inside my purse or my backpack um, full of kid stuff. And um, I really like the fact that it stays shut without a zipper. Anyways, moving on from bag talk, <laughs> um, here I am winding. You know, in these fast forward clips, I see how many times I have to um, adjust my smaller Swift to wind it up. And in thinking about my tools for projects, that's definitely something maybe next on my list to take a look at. First up, here are all the kits together if you want to see all the yarns. I don't know the stitch markers here, but this is what the gobstopper balls of yarn look like. I know I had shown the samples in my last video but there are the balls and the bags and i'm going ahead and winding or wrapping all of the yarn labels on the yarns i think that will help to keep everything straight sometimes the blue ones end up looking similar in the skein form um, i just want to make sure i get the right balls of yarn with the right bags so i am preparing it now now these yarn labels I probably made like three years ago and I have still been using them. Obviously there's nothing wrong with them, but at some point in the future, as I start to use up my stash, I would like to redo them. Um, and I've got lots of ideas, but I also don't want to just be wasteful and not use them. Um, they work just fine, but I am writing all the yarn information by hand and when I'm just doing a ball or two, it's not a big deal. But as I'm doing more and more, I would like to change that process and before I get new labels I'm just going to start printing them on the computer I think and cutting them out and gluing them on I think it would be faster especially well, here when I've like plenty of them that I wrote um, to be able to just have it uh, printed or maybe on a label or a sticker to put on I think would really help the process I'm only trying to see what steps are easier to um to upgrade without like spending a lot because I'm not like selling a ton to be able to like buy a bunch of new stuff but I also just kind of want to keep up with um, being able to do more and list more and I think that's the only way to continue to grow um, but yeah it's been it's fun not only to do it but then in these videos it kind of like forces me to look back and see what steps are working what steps need a little bit of improvement i'm going to talk about the winding tools a little bit later on um but first of all i want to get these kits up and all four of them are listed on etsy separately also because like i mentioned i don't have quite as many of the purple bags but i do have the yarns i was thinking about listing some of the yarns separately uh, i haven't done that yet right now they're only available as the kit I just don't want to um, make sure I have, I want to make sure I have enough for each listing basically. Uh, but I am thinking about listing a few of the yarns separately and just see if there's any interest there as well. Um, but for now they are being assembled, at least a few of each one as a kit. So if you order one, this is generally what it will look like. Um, each one is a little bit different, but you kind of get the idea with the stitch marker and everything else. So that kind of concludes the kits. All four of them are up and they are now packaged and ready to go. But this moves into this idea I've been having now that I'm into this new warping mill, I want to see what it's like to dye a longer stripe repeat. Instead of doing my typical four stripe repeat, um, 
what do I, I don't know. I just want to experiment with doing a longer stripe repeat now that I have the capacity to do so. So I am wrapping a lot of wraps here and it is making a very, very long loop. So if you're not familiar, the longer that I wind it, like the more wraps on here and the <clears throat> longer that loop ends up being, the more room I have to play with color wise. So when I am working on my stripes, I can do a lot of really skinny stripes. I can do like really chunky stripes. I just have so much room to play with. Um, and for this one, I have it all divided up here as I wind it off into 14 stripes. And each one is about three um, rounds each, depending on um, how loose your gauge is. But that is what I'm working with here, 14 stripes, which gives me so much room. And I have some ideas of how I want to dye this one up already. And I'm really excited about it. And I've got lots of ideas of other things I want to dye, other combinations and just pictures as inspiration um, for different color series and things like that. And with more room, it just gives you so much more flexibility to be able to like repeat colors, like ones that say go, well, like say on the purple one, it's like purple, black, purple, black, but each purple is different. So each chunk before it repeats is how long I have to figure out. Now for this initial 14 stripe repeat, which I keep saying because I'm still shocked that I did all 14 colors, I used uh, succulents as the inspiration. So you know there's a lot of photos of succulents that have those kind of tealy greens, those light teals, but then there's also some like lilac purples and pinks and yeah so I was looking at pictures of that and pulling some colors from there to use in this colorway because that is the inspiration it is called succulent if you're looking for it but as I'm going I kind of have this picture and this vision of how I want to alternate the stripes I did not plan this one out ahead of time like on paper like I did with the kits but I kind of have a vision for how I want it to go and this here is what five skeins of a very long colorway look like it was not that much more work than doing fewer stripes. Obviously the dyeing takes longer, but generally speaking, so much of the time is taken up in the winding off and winding on that it was very manageable. Now you will see my large warping mill here is pretty wobbly and it was in need of a little bit of welding and that has since happened and I'm really grateful it has. <clears throat> a few of the welds they were being grounded smooth and they got a little too thin and so they are pumped back up we're good to go but you might notice some wobbling it has since been fixed so I said I would circle back to some of the, the tools and that is definitely something I am want to talk about because it's something I'm thinking about all the time so you can see I'm having to spin my swift a lot to wind it up and that's fine but I was definitely just talking to my husband about different ways we could change that, whether it's like a treadle system or attaching a motor. I know there's a lot of motorized ones, but you just have to be careful that they don't get too like out of control and there's an easy stop and there's just a lot of things to think about. But for now, since I just <laughs> got these tools built, I'm not going to be making any changes. Just as I work through my process, I like to be thinking about what works, what doesn't, what can be improved and what those improvements might be. But I'm just loving seeing this wound up. It looks so different in a skein than it does um, separated like this. And I can't wait to show you the sample because it looks even better all knit up. You may also see some streamers in the background. We were celebrating a very special fifth birthday this week. And so those have just appeared in showing you um, this process. Somehow the lighting is so much worse in this angle than in the last angle, but I promise you it looks better and you'll get to see a shot of this in the daylight <laughs> to see how it really looks. There's all those colors mixed together and again it just it doesn't read the same, um, but I just love these colors and I think they are so pretty and I love to see them together. And I took my sample <laughs> with me to dance competition this weekend, uh, barely got anything knit, but then when we got home, I decided it was time. I could not wait to see as each color unfolded. It had been at least a week since I had dyed it. So it was so fun to look and I truly did not remember what was coming next. So extra fun that way. And this is what it looks like in a skein. And here it is. It is now for sale along with the kits over on my Etsy shop if you'd like. But that is all for me today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.